In this repair video, we're going to be working on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch and the customer mailed two of them. I just want to look at the ticket numbers so we can see what the customer wrote. The replacement screen won't respond to touch. I found your videos showing a resistor, probably the wrong item. That is the usual issue. And looking at the ones in my iPad, they're probably the issue as well. I got the iPad without a screen on eBay. It's missing the cover that holds the ribbon connectors down. The customer does not mention anything about mailing two tablets, but we did receive two tablets from the customer and we received one screen. The customer said he bought the tablet off eBay without a screen, but we do have a screen. And we have another one here. And both of them, they have issues and that's based on our first inspection. Tablet number one, let me go over this quick. I'm not sure if we're going to do both tablets in one video or if we're going to do one at a time, it depends. I want to show you what's wrong with the first tablet. It looks like we have a blown touch filter. The customer did attempt to resolder the backlight filter, which is this one here. Looks like we have a blown touch filter and there's a soldering attempt on this touch filter as well. That's what I can tell by just looking at this board. We do not know if those backlight diodes are good or even if the backlight driver chip is good. And I think we'll just go over this once we start working on it. I'm not sure if we're going to work on this one first or we're going to work on what appears to be the more difficult one. And it's this one here. And the reason I say this one is more difficult because there's no obvious signs of damage on that board. The backlight filters, they look very good. This one and this one, the touch filter is good. We have more filters here that deals with touch. They are also good. And I do not see anything obvious here. I did do a quick visual inspection on the board before I started to record and I did not find anything obvious. So now that we are recording, we're going to have to figure out why this tablet is not powering on. Normally when we charge a tablet, an Apple tablet, the ampeter should read about one amp. Every iPad tablet, when we plug the charging cable, the ampeter should read one amp. Five volts and one amp draw. Okay. If we look at the amp meter now, it's reading 0 0.6 amps. If I look at the white meter I have down here, it's reading 0 0.5 amps. 0 0.5, 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 is an indication that we have a problem with the motherboard. Almost always, anytime I read a 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 reading, anywhere in that range, it's almost always a short. And that's based on my experience working on those tablets. It's not based on what I have found online, but it's based on my experience working on those tablets. Almost always. 0 0.47, 0 0.48, 49, 50, 60, even 70 is an indication that we have a short somewhere on the board. Sometimes it's easy to find the short and sometimes it's challenging to find the short. But with the voltage injection tool and the thermal camera, it should not be difficult. And we should consider this job done right let's see right now the first thing we're going to do is inspect the board under the thermal cam and see if there's anything obvious because right now nothing looks obvious on the motherboard no blown components no burned components no missing components everything looks very clean we're going to turn on the thermal cam and we're going to plug power and see if anything gets hot on the board Okay, so let's go to our thermal cam and we're going to plug the charging cable and see what happens. Okay, so I plug the charging cable and the battery is disconnected. We do not have the battery connected. So by just plugging the charging cable, I see a heat spot right over here. Let's see if we can pinpoint where that heat is coming from. Let's go to manual mode. And we're going to increase the temperature boundaries. 
Okay. I'm going to unplug the cable and plug the cable back. What's getting hot? Okay, so heat is starting. Let's do this one more time. Right here. Heat is starting from this area. So let's go under the microscope and see what's going on in this area. We're going to be looking at this heat spot right here, and we're going to see what's next to it. This looks like it's a coil. I'm looking at it by my eye. And this, I do not know what's here. This one heated up first, and then this one, the coil. So heat is coming from this area right here, from the very top. And our battery is disconnected. All we did was plug the charging cable. What's in this area? Let's see. This area we have a diode. We have the backlight diodes. And we have a coil. A coil is not going to cause a short. So it has to be the diode. Meter in diode mode. And let's test to see what we get on this diode. These diodes normally should read around 0 0.14 voltage drop. Let's test and see what they are reading. Right, so we're going to do this. And look at that, we are reading a short. We are reading a short. Let's test this diode here. And we have a short on this diode also. What if we test the coil that's next to the diode? And we have a short and the other end of the coil, of course, we're going to have a short. Same here and same here. So what's causing the problem? Is it the diode? Is the diode bad? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like the diode is bad. And right now, I do not have a reason to believe that the diode is what's causing the short. So what we're going to do at this point before I start removing the diode why don't we inject voltage onto one end of the coil? We inject voltage right here, or we can try to inject voltage right here and see if that makes any difference and look at the board under a thermal cam. Then we can really pinpoint where the short is coming from. Because right now the coil getting hot does not mean that the coil is bad. The coil does not short to ground. The diode does short to ground, but it looks perfectly fine. I do not see any cracks. I do not see any burn marks. So I'm going to assume that the diode is good. I have my voltage injection tool set at 1.1 volts. We're going to connect black probe to ground. And I'm going to use this probe to inject 1.1 volts at either end of the coil. We're going to see if that makes any difference. Sometimes it does make a difference if you inject voltage before or after the coil. So we're going to try both and see what happens. And our board is right here. So the first thing I want to do is inject voltage at the diode. And when I say the diode, I mean this part of the diode here. Then we're going to inject voltage here. Then we're going to inject voltage here and see if that makes a difference. So we're going to start with the lower end of the diode. And one, two, three. Okay. So I'm injecting 1.1 volts and the voltage injection tool is showing five amp draw. And we see heat only on this area of the board on here where I'm injecting the voltage. And there's nothing in this area but this diode, the coils and some capacitors on the left. But honestly, I'm not happy with this heat spot, because it doesn't tell me much. What if we inject voltage on to one end of the coil, to left side of the coil? Okay, and I'm getting heat in the same area. 
So something tells me that we have a short on this area of the board. But still, I want to inject voltage on the right side of the coil and see if that makes a difference. Because I'm convinced, I feel it inside that the short is not coming from this area of the board. Let's inject voltage on the right side of the coil. And I see something on the left. I see something on the left. Right here. You see it? And that's what I'm interested in. Look at this. That's what I'm interested in. We have a short somewhere here. So what's here? Let's go under the microscope and see what's here. Short is coming from this area of the board. What a relief. It's common that we have shorted caps around this power I see in the middle. So now that the thermal camera showed us a heat spot here, I'm almost 99% sure that it's one of those caps that is causing the short right here, right here, and in this whole area. We injected voltage here, and we monitored the board under a thermal cam. We found a big heat spot here. I injected voltage here, same thing. I injected voltage here after the coil, and something warmed up or heated up right over here. So how can we tell which cap is what's causing the short? Right now, I do not see any obvious signs to which cap may be shortened to ground, except for maybe this one here. I see something here. Look at this. You see? Look. That may not be it, but based on visual inspection, it looks like it. So how can we be sure before we start removing caps? Maybe I can inspect this under the thermal cam again. Or we can put some alcohol here and I'll inject voltage on this side of the coil and see where alcohol evaporates first. Maybe that way we can pinpoint where the short is coming from. Because right now I cannot hold the probe to inject voltage with one hand and the thermal camera with the other hand and pinpoint on the cap with a third hand. I do not have a third hand, unfortunately. So maybe if we try alcohol, that would do it. Right now, I'm going to inject voltage right over here. Okay, and we're going to go here, and we're going to apply some alcohol. And I need to apply a lot of alcohol to see where alcohol is evaporating first. Maybe I can put this thermal pad on the side for now. Let's do this one more time. Inject voltage here, and I see a 5 amp draw. And there you see. Look at the cap that we pointed to. Let's go ahead and remove that cap and see what happens. Right now, we do not want to remove one cap and knock off 10 caps. The area is crowded. And the way I'm going to remove the cap is the old-fashioned way, which is apply heat and pull on that cap. And a lot of people are going to say, ouch. It's all right. Just like that. Done. Let's wait until the board cools down a bit. Do not measure caps when they are hot because you're going to end up with a short. Let's see. And it looks like we still have a short. We still have a short.
Let me test those caps one more time. The short is gone. You see, and that's why I told you, do not test for a short when the board is still hot. We just waited like 30 seconds, one minute, until the board cooled down, and now we are testing good. Short is gone. So we removed the right component. We removed the right component. And the tablet is fixed. That's it. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that the tablet is fixed. We're going to plug the charging cable. And we're going to see if the tablet charges at 1 amp. Before, when I plugged the charging cable, the amp meter read 0 0.6 amps even though the battery is disconnected. And that's an indication that we have a short because the battery is disconnected. How can the tablet draw amperage if the battery is disconnected? So right now, if we plug the charging cable with the battery disconnected, what do we get? We get a reading of zero. And that's proper. Okay? Zero or 0 0.1. It doesn't matter. Okay? If I disconnect the separator from the battery, One point one amps. One point one amps. Tablet is fixed. Okay, I'm not sure if you can. I'm not sure if you can see this. I do not want to zoom in right now, but it's reading one point one amps. The tablet is fixed. And if we monitor the board under a thermal cam, what do we see? We should see the CPU on if the tablet is charged. We see that the CPU is on and the board looks healthy. Right now, to confirm that the tablet is working, we have to connect the screen. And as soon as we see a battery logo, we know that the job is done. So let's go ahead and do that right now so we can finish the video. Disconnect the battery, disconnect the charging cable, and let me grab the screen the customer mailed over. Okay, the screen is connected. We're going to plug the charging cable, but I need to press down on the battery connector because we don't have it screwed in. And what do we see? Do we see an Apple logo? We should. We see a broken screen. That's what we see. The tablet is working. Tablet is working, but the customer screen is bad. The customer screen is bad. And the customer mailed over the screen like this, disconnected. Okay, we do see cracks all over the place here. Here, 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 here. Okay, so the screen is broken, but the tablet is on. If the tablet was not powering on, then you would not see this. Awesome. All right, so we're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.